Tick tock, tick tock. We're all about to get exactly what we wanted. May baseball, baby, on the table. We're not playing games in 40-degree weather. We're not bitching about the wind and the clouds and the snow. We wait for the summer months to hit us, and baseball will be back right on time for Memorial Day, Yankees Stadium versus, I don't know, the Toronto Blue Jays, and everybody's going to be happy. Right, Evan? No. No? Oh. No. I may have misread that one. Seems like a lot of you are very upset that the uh, the report is that the owners told the players today, listen, if you push us and you don't want to get a deal done today, we're willing to miss a month of the season, which goes, of course, totally in contrast to what the commissioner said a few months ago, which is, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, any type of uh, uh, lost games would be disastrous for our sport. Yet, here we are. It's because they want it. Six o'clock, five o'clock. So you got three hours to go, Evan. They want it. Will a deal no. get done? I've told you for a week a deal's not getting done. Oh, what scares man. me is there are at least eight or nine owners of small market teams that actually agreed with the sentiment you just laid out. They don't want to open up the gates. They don't want to have baseball. They don't want to pay the salaries. And I think that's become obvious to anybody paying attention. They don't want to start the season on time, and most fans are going to suffer uh, from to me, it. Some of them don't. That's for sure. Well, that's that's, what, I obvious. that's yeah. what I just said. Yeah. yeah, It doesn't need to be the majority. Remember, you just need eight, eight. owners to block You need eight owners to, to uh, collude if you want. Yeah, yeah, and all you've got to do is look at the small market teams in baseball, look at the teams that don't like to pay for players. They probably look at their attendance figures in April and early May and say, yeah, we're better off not playing. And that's been my fear all along, and I think it's obvious. I think you've come around to realizing and admitting we are not getting a 162-game season. Well, listen, uh, you got three hours today. Craig, there we're is not. A, There is a little wiggle room. For what? In the, in the, uh, here's the, I don't want to get too in the weeds. I, I, we talk about it all the time. You know, today's the deadline to start the season opening day, March 31st. Because part of that is 28 days of spring training, which apparently the owners are not budging on based on your recent history of guys getting hurt, what the players have complained about, etc. So I think they're in lockstep on that part of it. But there's three extra days there before March 31st, obviously, right? Yeah. The reason there's three days in there is that there is a belief that once you agree to everything and it goes to the lawyers to do all the paperwork, that it will take three full business days to what they call ratifying the deal, which basically just means every page gets signed off on, right? Hundreds of pages, lots of big words. We do have to go through that. That's that's part of the process here. There is thought that there's like a day or two in there of some wiggle that if negotiations were going well today yeah, and they carried over to it, tomorrow, it's not, the ratification process could be that, sped that's up. That's not what I'm worried about. So there was a lockout in 1990. No one remembers it because we played 162 games. The lockout in 1990 was settled on March 17th. I kid okay. you not. They pushed the season back a week, and they extended the season by, I think, about three days. Did they have double they, headers and stuff or and, no? Yes, and right. they made up every game. Is there a willingness, if we don't start this season to let's say, April 10th, I'm pushing it back two weeks. I'd Is prefer there, May 30th, well, but okay. No, quite frankly... No one cares what you prefer. I would just prefer that. You're not it's a, better for everyone. Yeah, but you're not a baseball fan. I love baseball. No, you're not. You know I love baseball. No, you're I'm okay. just thinking 100 games, no days off is Stop. perfect. Stop it. It's just perfect. Very few people agree with you. Well, all right. Very few people. I even put a poll out this weekend out of morbid curiosity, not connected to the show, because I think you believe that any show poll has a bias against you or for well, me or it whatever. Does because people enjoy watching me lose. Okay. <laughs> Well, I put a poll out on Sunday morning. I think yeah, it was. All right. It got 12,000 votes nice. saying, well, who yeah. are you most pissed at, the owners or the players? Yeah. And it was 74% owners. So I think you're not really feeling the temperature of the people on that either. Right or wrong, because there are things this weekend that pissed me off about the players. I'll give you a specific example. I don't think they moved at all on the luxury tax threshold. Everyone's criticizing the owners, rightfully so. They haven't moved either, but nobody's moved. Yeah. And so my frustration, Craig, as a baseball fan, is here we are at the deadline, and yes, it's imposed by the owners, sure, but nobody's actually moved. What are we talking about here? There's been minor moves, which uh, don't get deals done. No. Like, you know, you can't be at 100, I'm at 15, 
And if I go up a dollar, you come down a dollar. It, we haven't moved. Uh, so I think you're right yes. in a lot of that. Yes. Yeah. So I, th I think, listen, I think there's mutual responsibility here. Obviously, if today's not going to go well. There's going to be a statement from both sides. They're going to be totally contradictory. They want you to pick sides. That's not good for anybody because no one's got your side, the fan side. And at the end of the day, the diehard fans of baseball are the losers here. The players don't lose. The owners don't lose. You lose. And ultimately, the sport loses because it pisses you guys off. Now, yeah. I'm like, I, no joke. I personally... If you told me the season started April 15th versus March 31st, I don't personally give a rat's ass about it. But I recognize I also live in a town, I grew up in a town, where baseball is king. There are not a lot of cities left in America where baseball is king. I believe New York is one of those cities. And again, maybe there's only two or three in the country where football doesn't easily dominate yeah. the landscape of everyday and by the conversation. Way, it's been that case for 20 years. Yeah, now, football in New York's gotten a lot closer for some people, maybe to ask surpass it, but New York is still a baseball town, and I do believe that in my heart. That being said, they go out of their way to damage the remaining diehard fan base, and we all know it's dwindling. You know, uh, your kids may not be fans the way you were, my kids certainly are not. Baseball fans the way I was as a kid growing up. And they don't, they don't, neither side seems to really care all that much about that because there is this belief, and there's some truth to it, that whenever we do come back and play, whether we allow them to play, whether they decide to play, the fans will always be there. The diehard fan will always be there. The problem for baseball is they need to expand with more than just a diehard fan. Yeah. And baseball over the last five years, and I've noticed it as a diehard baseball fan, has become a tougher game to watch. It has. The games take well, longer. Well, I disagree with There's you. There's less action. I think people have changed maybe at a greater rate than the game I, has changed. The game has changed, Craig. That's indisputable. Ah, no, no, it has. I, fundamentally, I can, it hasn't. No, no, it has. The games like, take longer. Like, why do you think you take your kid out because you're crazy? Like, my kid won't watch a baseball game. There's no interest in baseball because he finds it boring. No, no, but Craig, you're missing right? my point. I understand that kids have changed. Society's changed. Yeah. You're not wrong about that. But what I'm pointing out to you, and it, it can't be disputed. It's backed by fact. I'm not going right. to bore you with it no, unless really you really challenge me on it, is that the games take significantly longer. Okay. There is less action in baseball today than there was seven years ago. Yeah. It's just based on which, fact. Which is why a lot of my brilliant ideas to make the game better well, really should be imposed. I'm not going down that road. But <laughs> baseball needs to find a way to improve. And instead, what's gone on over the last few months is self-inflicted wounds and not looking yeah. on how to fix the game. They couldn't be more out of touch with reality. I agree with you on that. We're in lockstep on that. They don't They don't see the forest for the trees ever. And I don't think either side does. So you can pick your side. I'm good with that. Don't matter to me. None of them get it. They're all tone deaf to the people that call this radio station who implore them to figure it out because life without baseball in New York isn't life. And that's that's real. It's real in Chicago. I think it's real in your know, St. Louis. There's uh, cities where baseball's but everything. But you're right. It's not a lot. I mean, it's St. Louis, uh, maybe Chicago, two or three. Boston, New York. Where else? Yeah, not a lot. I don't think they even care about in Philadelphia. But, but what's amazing is that, you know, the uh, the offices for baseball are here, too. Right. So you would think they'd be extra sensitive to a New York uh, fan. Not that they would curry favor to New York. They shouldn't. Uh, but, the, yeah, they must hear it. I know they got to hear it. Here's the good news, though, baseball fans. You did get good news today. Let's not let's not pretend, Evan, like it's all doom and gloom. What good I saw, news did we oh, get? Oh, we today? got fantastic news today. What was that? Oh, see, this is you. This is you're so negative towards everything in baseball. I, they're about to you, shut baseball down oh, today. And so what? <laughs> you got fantastic news today. What's that? News that you didn't see coming. It came out of left field this year. New York Yankees old timers day. Derek Jeter's available. <laughs> Derek Jeter's no longer associated with the Marlins. He quit. He retired, resigned. He walked out. That means he's now a Yankee again. Yeah. He's going to show back, Derek. He's going to show up at Old Timers Day if there's an Old Timers yeah. Day, which implies there's a season. I love it. That's my main man right there. Derek Jeter's back. You see back. why he quit? 
Well, I read the story like you did. So, I mean, if you if the story's accurate, I mean, he, look, he claims they're going in a different direction, meaning I would thought we'd spend X. They yes. don't want to spend that much. Now, that's being taken by many players right now on social media as a victory for them, as Derek Cheaters standing with the Players Association because, and I think there's truth to this. So, when the first offseason was going on, remember when the Mets were active and they were signing guys? <laughs> Craig, the Marlins were attached to a lot of free agents. And I always thought that was weird. Like, wow, look at the Marlins. Yeah. They're actually going to spend. They were attached to Nicholas Castellanos. Okay. Lockout happens. Everything shuts down. Obviously, only certain teams made moves. Not everybody did. And apparently, during this lockout, the opinion of the money man in Miami changed. Which is, eh. I don't know if we should spend money. <laughs> and Derek Jeter, who I think wants to spend money, sure. wants to win, he's a competitor, said, wait a second, we have a $56 million payroll. Really? We're not spending? Yeah. I dumped Christian Yelich. I dumped uh, Giancarlo Stanton. I dumped Marcelo Zuna. You're telling me we're not spending? So not that this will have anything to do with the labor mm. negotiations, but baseball players, specifically Francisco Lindor, actively on social media is saying, thank you, Derek Jeter, as if his resignation is a sign that he is standing yeah. with the players. And now you have uh, the big story of the day. Uh, if you think that I'm a spokesperson for the owners or for Rob Manfred, right, that's fine, you can think that. Jeff Paston, who's regarded as the number one insider in Major League Baseball, to his credit, came out today with uh, an article that's now uh, going viral in which he's clearly doing the players' bidding, which is really not his job as an objective reporter. And he actually came out and said, MLB did this. The owner's arrogance, the mistreatment of players. And then there's a huge article that goes beyond that. Mm -hmm. But that's what's getting a lot of the attention, where the number one baseball writer or reporter, uh, really undisputed, you know, him, I know people, you know, respect some other guys as well, but he's the guy right now. For him to come out and blame the owners and claim the players have been mistreated. Wow. Well, he's half right. That ain't objective reporting. It, the owners That's are. That's Tony Clark saying, write this. Well, you're right. I would never say the players have been Come mistreated. Right. They're all millionaires. If you want to say this is the 60s and the 50s and the 40s, that's mistreatment prior to the reserve clause. So I totally disagree with that. But I do think this is the owner's fault. That's fine, but you can't say the players are mistreated. Yeah, I wouldn't use that phrase. Bad word. Yeah. Bad word. And now you've revealed yourself to be a shield for the players, which is fine. And that's where you want to go. But you're supposed to be an objective reporter who just announced I work for the players, which is an interesting take, and obviously it's getting a lot of attention today. Listen, as things break today, we'll bring it to you, of course, 877-337-6666. If the owners are men of their words and the deal's not done, how could it be at this point? By 5 o'clock today, opening day is not March 31st. It doesn't mean you lose anything else. But today, you lose opening day. So I asked you every day last week, late for the yeah. show, I yeah. said, yeah, you did. are we getting 162? Yes. And you remain steadfast. Yes, 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 like you're Daniel Bryan. Well, I'll ask you again. Who's Daniel Bryan? You know Daniel Bryan. I do. Brian Danielson. Brian yes. Danielson? Yes. No. You met him. I Outside did. Outside the facility. Oh, the little guy. The little guy. Yeah, yeah. the little wrestler guy. The little wrestler guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got him, yeah. I ask you right now at 2.15 yeah. on the final day of February. Yeah. With baseball staring down the barrel of the gun of canceling games. Right. Are we getting 162 games? Sadly, yes, you are. You still think this? Yeah, I don't want you to, but you're getting them. Oh, yep, you're getting it. I remain steadfast in my belief. You play 162. Anyway, I don't believe you. <laughs> we'll get all your calls on it. It's, uh, listen, less than three hours to go. And if the stories are right that the owners showed up today with some swagger, uh, like uh, they're going to the OK Corral, and the first thing out of their mouths was, look, if you don't negotiate today, we'll miss the entire month of April. We're good. Wow. That's ballsy. That's ballsy right there. It's exactly what they want. Now, it's what we've known they've wanted for months. It's why they locked the players out and never made an offer for how many days? Do you know the number? 42 days. I mean, originally, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. because there are owners that don't want baseball. We call them the carton wing of baseball ownership. You like that? Yeah, it's you. 
You guys don't want baseball. Nah. And that's why what are we, we what are, are not we, getting What have we been called? It. The carton wing of the baseball ownership oh, I'll group. I'll take that. I yeah. don't mind that. You guys don't want baseball in April well, or May. It's not that we don't want it. We just could live without it. No, no. You don't want no, it. No, no. Like, if, it, if baseball started March 31st, I'm your Huckleberry. I'll be there with you. But if it doesn't, I'm okay with that, there too. There are nine owners who don't want baseball it, in April. Neither one of them are New York owners, by the way. Oh, no, no question. Yeah, I want to be Look, clear about that. Met fans are not mad at Steve Cohen right now. Right. Yankee fans may be mixed about how it's a different story, but this lockout is not because of Steve Cohen. Actually, it's because there are some owners afraid of Steve Cohen. Perhaps. So there are some Met fans, myself included, who are a little pissed off yeah. that finally we get to eat cake. Finally, we're the fat kids shoving food down our throats, and yet those other owners want to stop it now? Yeah. Right now they want to stop it? I don't know why you have to make fun of fat people, especially children, Evan, but okay, that's a decision you've made. 877-337-6666. We got a lot to cook in, including uh, a little basketball. We got some football coming up. As uh, <laughs> Wait to hear this football story. It's fascinating how desperate some uh, NFL or you know, sports insiders are to make a name for themselves with the things they come up with. 